What's up, everybody? Video 44 coming up to another video. All right, so the dream I just had was not going to wait till later on when it's time to walk down the street. That ain't, that ain't, this ain't that kind of dream. First of all, um, hope everybody's having a great day. Good start to your day. It's eight in the morning. I just woke up and my dream was very, very, very interesting. Very interesting. Um, the first dream I had was very real. It was real. It was one of those situations where I had had an edible. In fact, several types of edibles. Weed edibles. It was uh, One of them was like some type of chocolate lollipop edible of some sort. And then I added it on some other stuff and I ended up literally flying. <laughs> like it was flying... Um, and it seemed like I was flying over workplaces, people's workplaces, but they didn't have regular uniforms. So it was almost like they had pajamas that they were uh, wearing to make up for the uniforms that were not available to purchase. It was weird, man. Very weird. And it was like I was on some type of magic carpet or something flying over these places. <sighs> Ended up... Um, in a situation where we finally, myself and whoever I was with, finally landed. And I kept, I found myself, after the edibles had worn off, trying to relax and, 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 and trying to get my mind right. And ended up having somebody's wife try to tempt me. You know, it was that kind of dream where I was trying to, you know, I was letting myself... Uh, get into a space where I was weak to that and ended up failing in that regard and it was something strange that that person said she was like it's the seven year anniversary of the talent I don't know what that was but it sounded demonic to me and she was like but I didn't even care it's the words that she's saying because of what's going on right here. And I'm like, I don't know what that's about. I ended up waking up out of that dream. Um, and went back to sleep. Afterward. Did all my regular stuff like I always do. And went back to sleep. Second dream I had was even more poignant. Now this is a situation where. Um, I'm at some type of grocery store. Some type of grocery store style place. Style place. Um. And it looked like one of the aisles or one of the rooms in that grocery store combined to look like somebody's apartment. A, a plethora of apartments that I've been in in my life. Several of them combined. Um, and it was almost like it was a situation where somebody had bought me a, a Kendrick Lamar album or something like that. And I listened to it. And then some ty type of um, flood had taken place in the room while I was listening to the album. The room slash grocery store slash apartment. It was very strange, hard to explain, but that's exactly what it felt like. And the flood slowly started to come creep up through the cracks of the floor, brown water. And as I'm looking around, I see other people who are also in the room with me. Um, in the grocery store, whatever that is. And as they're, you know, starting to realize that the water's coming up, they start to try to patch it up with, with uh, newspaper and various different things. And I ref in that moment, while we're trying to patch the flood, I reflected upon a deja vu type of moment within the dream where someone had bought me a Kendrick Lamar album and something like that had happened before, maybe two years before that. Didn't make any sense, but I kept hearing the song. I love when you count me out. I love when you count me out. That that was what was playing as we were patching up the flood. And I just remember that whole vibe was broken. The whole me patching up um, and helping others by a pipe burst that I guess I was sitting on and I dropped about 40 feet 
in the middle of listening to this song, in the middle of everybody just trying to patch up the flood, I guess what the floor underneath me was sitting on was a pipe, and that pipe ex exploded, or not exploded, but just fell from underneath itself, and I dropped. And as I dropped, I landed in water. But it had to be about 40 feet. I could feel my, my whole spirit falling and falling, falling, falling into the darknesses. And I looked up and all I could see was a small hole in this, you know, it, above me. The rest was pitch black. I knew I had fallen and I knew I needed to be rescued. There was no way I was going to get out of there without being rescued. At that point, I saw um, a rope. And someone had brought down a rope to get me out of there. Someone had, had dropped something down. I was able to grab it immediately. I wasn't down there for longer than 20 seconds. And they rescued me. Now, the issue was, um, once I got to the top, you know, as, as I was pulled up, I was then told I needed to be the weight so someone else could come down and rescue someone else but i had to at the top of the well or whatever that was the top of the hole i had to hold the rope and 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 weigh myself down against someone else some other grown man's weight and then someone else down there and so they could rescue them i'm like man i don't know if i could do this but it was the only way it was going to be done for whatever reason so when i got to the top i immediately had to hold the rope and and, and pull that off So that's what I was attempting to do. And we sent somebody else down there and I'm holding the rope and it's pulling me naturally. And it ends up pulling me to a point where my whole body has to cover the hole to suspend myself from falling down the hole too. You see what I'm saying? So I have to lay out flat over that hole holding the rope. And I'm asking others who are sitting by watching as people sitting in seats next to me there. And I'm like, would you grab me so that I can, you know, have more weight attached to myself to do this? And um, for whatever reason, I think they were too scared or petrified to even help. It was one of those type of things. And um, make a long story much longer. <laughs> uh the person who I led down there <clears throat> ended up coming back up and said, there's two bodies down there. There's two. Now, when I had fallen, um, I heard a voice scream. So I knew I wasn't the only person who, came, who fell. It sounded like it was my mother. And I don't remember how she equated to the dream, but it seemed like she was in that grocery store with me somehow. So I was worried that she was one of them, right? And so there were some, some, some moments passing between what next happened. Um, we had pulled the guy up, and, and the guy who, who ended up going down there, when we pulled him up, he looked like Jim Carrey. I don't know. I thought it, it might have been Jim Carrey in a dream, whatever the case may be. But he, he came back up and essentially said, there's two bodies down there. I wasn't able to rescue them. They already gone. And so I looked at the one of the people who was sitting in the seats next to where I was trying to suspend the 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 the, uh, the the rope and it was an Indian guy and he started talking about football he was saying something along the lines of yeah man the Jaguars they're not doing too good or something like that they're down a touchdown I'm like okay who are they playing he was like the Cowboys I'm like all right something like I don't care about this at this moment but that's good to know and it was one of those situations where he started to poke at my side. Like, he started to, like, try to irritate me. It was almost like he was trying to just dis disrupt my focus on what was going on, but not in a good way. And it wasn't like he was trying to make me feel better. It was almost like he was trying to trying to disturb the, the focus of what it is I need to do in order to try to save whoever I need to save or what have you. And so I ended up getting irritated with him. I pushed him, you know, I was, you know, rebuked him more or less. And, and, and moved on. And then there was a moment where somewhere in there, 
I think I have to remind before the pipe burst in order to make this make any sense. Before I fell 40 feet, when the water started to raise, there were some some people who were starting to get concerned about the flood itself. Yes, I got to rewind. Before the pipe burst, it was a lot of stuff. We ended up seeing the, the water f flood in such a way that it became disturbing before the pipe even burst. Um, and it was two girls that that I was trying to console and essentially what I told them was the devil sent something to us but God will respond and I don't know what your faith is but always remember that I've told you this God will respond and, and I remember looking at them and one of them seemed like she understood that to be true the other one was kind of skeptical of what I was saying but they were very scared about the flood and they were very concerned about what would happen. Not long after that, the pipe bust, I fell to 40 feet and all of that. So that's important because later on in the dream, um, it was a situation that kind of aligned with that. Where when once they had told me that there was two bodies down there, I ended up running into one of those girls. And I told them, I was like, you know, I'm worried about who one of those bodies would be because when I fell I heard another voice next to me fall too and it sounded like my mother and I don't know if she's okay and but I then I said to her and she gave me the like a hug she's like oh my god okay you know trying to console me a little bit but then I told her I was like but I think it's okay because in real life my mother's already passed so I don't have to mourn this as bad because I know she's already gone it was like that is exactly what i told her but i'm still worried because in this dream she'd fallen and i'm not sure she's okay it was it was like literally that and as i'm saying that i'm i'm, I'm just sitting there in concern and, and i look up and it's my mother walking she's wearing a black sweater and she's moving ex somewhat eerily slowly walking from the left side of my eyesight to the right side of where I'm walking, where I'm, what I'm looking at. She's it's like, she's moving from left to right, really slowly paced ever so slowly in a very eerie and scary kind of way. And she's wearing, she's wearing the black sweater and she, she turns, she walks from left to right and then turns and faces me and walks toward me directly toward me and I'm looking my mother in the face she looked like her when she was in her late 40s early 50s and I'm not scared I'm excited to see my mom like just like I always am and I was like and she was like baby what happened it was almost like she turned into a regular self after doing that eerie walk toward me I'm like she was like baby what happened I was like mommy I fell 40 feet but then I was rescued and I had to save someone else and she was like, she said something along the lines of, I'm so proud of you. I'm so proud of you. And then she said something along the lines of, I had to, I was able to get this process going because of you. This is what she said to me. And then she put her head down. And from behind her arose a book as if it came out the collar of her sweater. And that book said, someone called for death, but they failed. And then it said a bunch of other stuff on there that I could not make out. It was, it was, it was supposed to be le eligible, legible, I guess you could say, readable, but I couldn't read it. But someone called for death, but they failed. And it showed a picture of a, of a uh, illustrated black queen with the, I don't know if you call it the Inca sign. I'm not really sure what it's called. It's like a loop. Um with two points coming out the both sides. It's like the infinity sign. I don't know what that sign is, but it looked like that. It looked like an ancient Egyptian sign, an ancient Egyptian queen. And the book was white. The queen was black. And the words looked like they were, they were in a different language, but for whatever reason, I was able to read them. And they, someone called for death, but they failed. And uh, it was like she put her head down in a weird way in the book came out of the collar it's the weirdest thing in the world and um then when she she lifted her head back up 
and said something along the lines of, I will be here for you. I will all, I will be here for you. And then I woke up. That's what I remember out of the dream. And I, I remember saying to her, thank you. Like those are the words I said, thank you. After she had said that. But it was the, it was eerie. But it was almost like my mother could understand that I was worried about her in the dream. <clears throat> and she wasn't, she was going to, uh, she was going to show up basically in the dream. Like, now nah, my son is worried about me being down here and he knows I'm gone, but he's still worried I'm, I'm showing up. Like this, this is the, I'm putting, I'm putting the end to this. And it was almost like she defied whatever she was doing to, to arrive in my dream to show concern to express to me that someone had called for death, meaning the devil tried something and God responded. It was that kind of thing. And um, because of me, I was able to get her process going. And I think about the dream that I had a few nights ago before I went to visit my mom at the grave, where she seemed like she, you know, as I was telling y'all, it seemed like she was lost. You know what I mean? She was expressing to me that she didn't know she had died and all of this and that. And, uh, she didn't know my father had passed and all that and how disturbing that dream was. And then I fast forward to where I am now and how that dream was. She's talking about because of me, I was able to get her process going. I don't know what the heck's going on spiritually, but I can tell you my mom's been popping up in my dreams for the last couple of days in this fashion. And I wanted people to know it. But I'm going to tell you, just like I told everybody else, in the, the, the two girls in the dream, and the devil's going to send whatever he sends. He's going to do his, what he does. And then God is going to respond. And that's, the wisdom of the dream you know I fell 40 feet and then I was rescued right away and then I was asked to do something impossible I was able to accomplish it but it came unfortunately not to the results we wanted but we were still able to get down there find who was down there and get the people who were trying to do the rescue and back up in very impossible ways I had people try to distract me I had devils try to tempt me in different aspects of his sleep. Um, I didn't successfully ward them off in all situations. You, you could find yourself tempted and fail and all of that, but the devil is going to act, and then God is going to respond. And that's what I took from the dream, man. And so as far as anything else in that dream, it's, it's fragmented. Some of it would have made a lot more sense if I'd have my thoughts in order. But I'm waking up fresh trying to give you this dream while so many different aspects of it are still in my head. But... Yeah, man, I'm very glad to have seen my mom in that dream and the way that she showed her up, showed up. I wish I was able to read the rest of what was on that book because I think it was meant for me to read it. I just wasn't able to comprehend it. But the first couple of words said someone ordered death and they failed. And so that's that's what I wanted to share with you guys, man. Very deep stuff. It kind of aligns with the with the dreams that I've had before these last couple of nights. It's almost like these are three parters and. And connected dreams. And uh, I don't know what type of struggles my mom was having in the afterlife, if any. But uh, to me, it seems like she's reached a different space. If what the dreams are telling me, it's almost like she's she's starting to awaken in some way that the Lord wants me to understand. And a different type of thing is going on right now with my mother's spirit. And that she was able to arrive for me and she will continue to. And she said she'll be there for me. So it's deep stuff happening out there. I don't know what, what's going on spiritually in the spiritual realm, but I can tell you things are happening right now spiritually. And people, um, if you are spiritually inclined, throw a prayer out there um, this morning after, re after listening to this. Because what I'm saying to you wasn't just a regular dream. It was very different type of energy attached to these dreams that I've been having. Um, very, very, very spiritual stuff. Some good, some very bad. You know, honestly. And uh, sometimes you hear stuff, you let things go into your inner ear, or you you experience certain things on this internet. And it's 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 you know, sometimes prayers need to be attached to what you receive. That's what I'm telling you. It's spiritual warfare out there, whether people people believe in it or not. When I wake up out of dreams like this, I know that. I know it. And, and with all the stuff that's happening in the world today and all the things that have ever happened as this thing is spent, um, staying prayed up and, and staying intentional on waiting for the Lord to respond to the devil's actions is 
something I think everybody of faith needs to consider uh, when going through what you go through and go and experiencing what you do. Um, so that's what I'm telling all of you guys, man. Say a prayer if you believe in something, because this was not minor. This was not this dream was not minor. Just like I told you about the dream that I had when I was sitting at the table um, with my auntie and my and my mother's friend, and then my grandmother was facing the wall, and and turned around and and shook my hand. This this had that vibe to it, and I haven't had a dream that had that vibe to it since, but this one had that. My mother came out of that corner with that same energy, wearing a black sweater and just moving in such a slow way that just felt extremely eerie to me, man. And yet she showed up for me and told me I was the reason she was able to get some type of process going. I don't know what that means. I have no idea what that means, man. But um, the book behind her was, was, was incredible. And I, I just I just want everybody to say a prayer, man. So that is what I have to say, man. If anything pops up in regards to that dream, I think I'm leaving something out. I don't know what it is, but um, yeah, I don't think it's going to pop up any <clears throat> any further. So I just wanted to say that, man, and um, wish all of you guys a fantastic day. And in whatever time you got going on in your life, just just know God will always respond. Media 44. I thank y'all for watching. I'm out.